Hey everybody, it's Scott. You know, Scott from Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, your favorite podcast. Hey, I'm coming to you right now to let you know that Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen and Nerd Cyclopedia, both podcasts. You get them both for the price of one. We're going to be at Steel City Con. That's right. Steel City's best comic book convention at the Monroeville Convention Center. Come see us April 12th through April 14th. We're maybe handing out some prizes, taking feedback, meeting fans. Who knows? You come by the booth and maybe you get to guest, uh, do a guest spot on one of our podcasts. You never know. So come on out and give us the business so we can give you our business in the form of podcasts. If you're joining us today for the first time, this is part six of a multi-part series designed to help introduce and discuss the source material for the HBO show Watchmen. If you are unfamiliar with the story or like to start from the beginning of a story, you may want to see our episode on issue one. Welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the show where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I'm Scott. I'm Sam. And if you're joining us today, we're going to be talking about one of our favorite, favorite things, and that is the Watchmen graphic novel. We'll be talking about Chapter 6, The Abyss Gazes Also. And how are you doing today, Sam? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, I'm feeling great. It's Sunday morning. All right. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm chilling. I'm talking about one of my favorite things in the world, which is you know, dark, complex comic books, so I'm having a fun time. <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome time talking about some really in-depth, deep stuff here, you know, um, cause sort of like mm. blows your mind the way that, you know, this, this, this whole graphic novel is presented and how it's um, put out there, you know? That's right, because this is, you know, chapter six is interesting because the first, well, before we get into the story, let's, let's talk a little bit about us. So mm-hmm. uh, where can they reach us? Let's talk about that for a second. So, so on Twitter, you can find us. Yeah, so on Twitter, yes. you, well, as Scott was about to allude to, on Twitter, you can find us at um, Watching Watchmen. I'm sorry, Watchmen Podcast. I'm sitting up here, okay. Watchmen Podcast, that's um, podcast with no T. Um, no T. That's tea. one at the end, Watchmen Podcast. Yep. Um, also one. at um, Nerd Cyclopedia. You can leave feedback for us at Watching Watchmen at NerdCyclopedia.com. Um, check out our Facebook group. At Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. Uh, mm-hmm. What else we got here? <laughs> <laughs> we got some. Uh, oh, you, you, can, you could um, also, um, you know, find it wherever you know you listen to podcasts. Your favorite podcasts. We're on TuneIn, iTunes, mm-hmm. um, Stitcher. You know, Spotify. Uh, we got a YouTube, YouTube channel, channel, now too, channel. Huh? Yeah, we got a YouTube yeah. channel now and everything. So we're everywhere, guys. Come join the Nerd Psychos. Yes. That's what we call. Yes. There's no P, so it's okay. It's just <laughs> the R D C Y C O S. So it's not actually psychos, uh, and that's why you know we're 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 gonna make an announcement here, and it's big news for us. It's something we've been talking about for a, a while now, and mm-hmm. uh, it's something we're gonna do. Okay. And that's that. Uh, you know, we are gonna be making an appearance at a booth at the Steel City Con. Yes. Which is in McKeesport. And uh, we're going to be real happy no, to go out to McKeesport. No, 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 it, no. It's in Moreauville. Okay, Monroeville. I get confused, you know. My dad's McKeesport, from McKeesport. McKeesport, Moreauville. Monroeville. Okay, that's um, like a, a few miles from each other there, Scott. It's just, you, you take, hey, listen, if you end up in McKeesport because you listen to me mm. first, then pause this podcast right away and drove to McKeesport for <laughs> some reason. <laughs> just take Route 48. That's the way to get to Monroeville for McKeesport, all right? Oh, man, you <laughs> got hashtag hate Scott all day <laughs> when you're the only one there, you know. That's right. You're the only and, one in and, McKeesport. In your cosplay, um, you know, outfit. <laughs> right. In your cosplay outfit, ask anybody where the convention center is. Too, I came here dressed as um, Rorschach. What happened? You know, <laughs> oh man, uh, you can be in a McKeesport. It's a Moreauville, guys. That's right, the Monroeville Convention Center. And what are the dates on that? Were they what, like tenth through the tenth, or tenth through the twelfth? No, like no, 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 no. It's from the twelfth through the fourteenth, Scott. Okay, we talked okay. about this. We did. You know, I I just don't pay attention. Oh, That's my problem. Man. I'm just not smart in the real world. Is really what it comes down it to. It would have been a wrong place, the wrong time. You know. People would have just been looking at all them cosplayers, just like, just like, who are these crazy people? <laughs> Maybe well, they need gonna to be, be camping locked out. up with Rorschach. You know? <laughs> We're here for the nerds, <laughs> nerds. That's what they'll be chanting. Oh man. Are talking about us? Uh, so come on out. You know, we're going to have a lot of fun. You know, we've got a lot of really great ideas for things we're going to do. Um, I know 
Uh, just to tease a few items we've talked about is, is trying to record a whole mess of podcasts. Yeah, a little marathon. Uh, while we're there. A marathon, mm -hmm. so to speak. So yeah. as you, uh, you're, we're on the, um, the Watching Wad Watchmen feed right now. Uh, as you know, we have another podcast called Nerd Cyclopedia, and we've been sort of uh, kicking around ideas for season two of Nerd Cyclopedia. And one of the things we've come up with is we'll just do it at the con. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So if so, you guys want to, um, you know, come down and you know check us out, and you may be a, even a guest star on the pod itself, you know, if you got some, um, you know, feedback that you want to say live right there. That's correct. You can say it right to our faces. So oh, no man. hashtags necessary. <laughs> no use, hashtags necessary. <laughs> none. Uh, so that's a little terrifying. Um, you, you know, can our, come our, with our your pitch force and um, you know, um, signs and everything. Just boycott us. You know, free, 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 free ball it, if you will. And we will accept vouchers for your check. <laughs> no, so if you want to come and say, I brought this for you, it's just the thing that says, I left a knife in security. That's fine with me. Um, so in addition to that, you know, our standard deal also exists where our advertising is available uh, and we'll be going to the highest bidder for every episode. Yes. So somebody maybe will be able to outbid the Chewbacca Memorial Association. <laughs> Please sponsor uh, for our us. Nerd Please sponsor Nerd Cyclopedia us. Space. <laughs> they are big friends of the cast. You know, they really hate hate the uh, <laughs> hate the Disneyization of Star Wars. Really miss the EU. The we really respect them. But hey, you know, if, if they continue to have the high bid, I mean, it's not like they can't keep it. It's just that other people may be interested in the space now. So, uh, you never know. So come on out. You know, um, yes, we look forward to seeing everybody out yes. there, all our nerd yes. psychos, yep. and uh, you know, spreading Take the pictures uh, and you know, have fun. We'll post you on our you know social media stuff and. You you know, hopefully mm -hmm. you post us too, you know? Yeah, I mean, hopefully you don't become alarmed at our appearance. <laughs> you know, you'll be able to... We won't you know, frighten much you too like bad. Many, yeah, much like many superhero figures, you know, just you become disfigured over time. <laughs> you know, sort of the outside turns to match the inside. Oh, yeah. You become the monster. <laughs> <laughs> you want to find out what my Christian Bale voice looks like? <laughs> you're going to find out. Uh so yeah, so we're real excited about that big announcement for us, big big news. So uh, we're awesome, looking forward to awesome. seeing everybody yep, out there. Yep, sure are. Okay, so without further ado, yep, and there's been plenty to do. Uh, we are going to jump on into uh, issue six of the uh, the Watchmen uh, limited series comic. Six. Number six, and number six opens up. And uh, before we jump into the specifics, I want to say this is kind of a chapter. It's about Rorschach and. The structure of the first six episodes of this series could easily be considered to be Comedian 1 and 2, Dr. Manhattan 1 and 2, and then Rorschach 1 and 2, mm -hmm. if you wanted to look at it that way. So there's a real, a real focus on the stories, histories, and origins of these characters. And if you think about the structure so far of the story, you sort of get like the end of the story first. So you get the Comedian's murder, or Dr. Manhattan leaving Earth, or... You know Rorschach's arrest mm -hmm. at the beginning, and then we're treated to the origin story. So how did we get there? Right, right. Um, Very which unique is sort way of the, in, in going yeah. about um, structuring. You know these chapters. Mm -hmm. It's backwards. <laughs> so the way a normal comic book series would go is you would have you know an origin first, and then later on the story would end. Right. That's how stories stories tend to work that way, Scott. Uh, <laughs> I should think about that. Oh, well, a uh, very unique way to um, um, structure a murder mystery, though. You know, um, I know, I know. So it's almost it's like pretty, you pretty know, interesting. That's if you ever if you ever read about how like um, Agatha Christie wrote murders, what she would say is that she they figure out the end first and then work their way back. Right. So that's sort of so this is a big murder mystery about who murdered the comedian, and it's always sort of working its way backwards, which is just another interesting structural element. And I think Which, that's one of the things that you just want to stress. At the end of the day, this whole graphic novel is all about who murdered the comedian. You know, mm -hmm. that's the that's the central plot. Who murdered the comedian? Because that's the way it starts off with. And mm -hmm. that's how we. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, what um, we, we start off with that. OK, absolutely. You know, one thing one thing I wanted to point out. Hey, so guys, I, say I, hi to my daughter. Hi. <laughs> Okay, go back, 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 go back. Oh, man. Another one of those nerd cyclopedia moments there. 
Yeah. You don't get that from real podcasts. Not at all. <laughs> we don't we don't bring in professionalism. We bring in other stuff. So we can. Ah, I'm just decent. <laughs> like my everyone knows. You know, my dog's been involved in this show intimately the whole time. She's tap dancing around oh, me because uh, her nails yeah. are longer. And yeah, yeah, you will hear my kids from time to time. You know, they're just like you know. <laughs> uh, okay. We're we're the type of comic book nerds that leave the full happy lives. You know, we <laughs> and also leave the doors open. You know. That's right. Oh, man. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. So uh, one thing, and uh, I'll, I'll level with you guys. My wife got a little behind this week. She's very busy, a lot of stuff going on. She didn't quite finish Chapter 5, but she did want to make sure I point, she pointed out that she was very grossed out by that cut from uh, the dude on the black freighter eating that seagull raw oh, right over man, to Dan that, eating that the chicken. That was pretty gross. That was like, oh. oh. Ugh. Mm. Mm. Ugh. Well, you know, he had to survive, you know. So hey. um, when you're out there and all alone and out in the sea and everything, what else are you going to do? You know, hey, eat, the, a, um, the eat, you a, do eat a seagull, seagull raw, you know. I mean, I'm just more I'm more disgusted with Dan eating a bird. You would think that he would have, <laughs> you know, more, more compassion for his feathered friends. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Night Owl himself, huh? <laughs> it's okay. The owl is a is a predator, as we all know. You know, it's a bird of prey. The most the most awesome looking and coolest bird of prey there is. Right. The owl. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Um. So anyway, uh, the, uh, chapter six is about Rorschach, and it's about Rorschach's incarceration and the psychological examination the state puts him under. I, I believe this is to determine his competency to stand trial. Right. Is right. He just yes. insane? Is he normal? What What's going on? Is he just you know evil, murdering people? So uh, the story opens, and we're and we're shown the cover is a Rorschach ink blot test. Yes, which, which uh, is the name of the character we're now, talking about. Now, quick question. So before mm-hmm. we get into that, what does that look like to you? What does it look like to yeah, me? To you? Well, hmm. So the so that. what is the purpose of a Rorschach test? Uh, it's the purpose of a Rorschach test. I think is to find like subconscious biases that people have by showing them random patterns of, 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 you know, ink, it sort of allows them to project their own internal, you know, biases and thoughts onto that. Okay. So it's sort of like the ultimate blank canvas. It's, it's just a pattern of shapes. that doesn't have any meaning, but there's something the human brain does. We, we find patterns, right? Even in things that have no pattern. So like so constellations are a really good example of this. Mm hmm. Like, every society has their own. Like, they call everything different. You know, everyone has different names for stuff. But, you know, they effectively, you know, everybody has, like, we draw these lines and these stars, right, to make patterns Mm -hmm. when there isn't one. So the Rorschach test sort of does that. Okay. And so the idea is, you know, when you look at the ink blot, if you are in, you know, distress or if you are, you know, uh, experiencing trauma, that you would see those things represented in the ink blot. So that is that is essentially what um, you know what the Rorschach test does is it can tell you you know what the state of mind is of the person. Okay. Okay. So um, what does the um, the picture on the front look like to you? <laughs> well, um, I had I had never thought about this as, as as that I should have an answer to this question. So let me think about it for a second. Look at it here. This will make a really great podcast uh, while I while I do that. It almost looks like. I don't know. It's hard. It, it, it just kind of looks like a bunch of. I, it looks like what I think it looks like because I know I've seen. It looks like almost like <laughs> I'm stumbling. It looks like the dog <laughs> image at the bottom of that first page, just because I feel like that's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? That's what Rorschach sees. I don't know. I've never really taken one before, Sam. What do you see in this ink blot? Uh, it looks like a butterfly to me. You know, mm-hmm. maybe I'm having like just um um um. I don't know. So it, it just it a, looks like to me like a butterfly. Is it yeah. a, a pretty butterfly? I uh, just like something that's flying and everything. You know, maybe I'm just predisposed <laughs> to like the actual chapter. So we'll get into it a little bit more. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I, I guess the question, the, the reason why I ask that question is because it could be anything. So yeah. once you know, when we go throughout this graphic novel, we see these um, Rorschach's masks just changing into different shapes and stuff and it could be anything and it leaves everything up to interpretation um mm-hmm. Rorsch, the rorschach text was actually invented by herman rorschach um way back in 1921 um, and everything so um that's where the term rorschach actually came from and um by scott as you know said you can look at these um different patterns and just take anything based on what you're 
what I guess your whole mentality is, you know, what your right. whole thought process is. So while Scott may look at a look at it as a, um, what did you just say? It looks like it looks like that dog at the bottom of page one, honestly. So right, right, like right. Him. And I may see like a butterfly. So right. I don't know what that says about either one of us. I don't know. <laughs> Looking at the same picture, um, and this is what they use to, um, you know, just determine um, individuals. You know, I guess I ass- assess an individual's personality and get an idea mm-hmm. of what their what their what their realm of thinking is. You know, not to say that there's something you know true and you know um fin- you know finite or whatever, but it's just an interesting way of just looking at um you know objects and interpreting. Yes. So. So it allows you to project your feelings onto the blank canvas Mm -hmm. is essentially what the Rorschach test does. Like it doesn't bring anything with it. Right. So the description that you give ultimately says can only say things about you because there was no implicit. There's no design to these cards. They're just random. They're they're supposed to be random blots. Right. Um, And so when we get to the end here, you know, we want to talk about this a little bit, but Rorschach sort of feels that the what's being projected on him mm-hmm. is sort of the filth of the society, right? The filth of the city is projected onto him. They're projecting that onto him. Right. Is what he feels. Uh, anyway, so that's <laughs> that's something that, that I, I think about him anyway. Right. One thing uh, we also want to note too that um this particular chapter the the um captions come from the psychiatrist, right? Yes, from Dr. Malcolm Young's notebook. Yeah. So at first we get, um, you know, the beginning we get um, Rorschach's, you know, you know, captions, and then we get into um, Doctor Manhattan's. Now we're getting into the mind of the psychiatrist. You know, mm-hmm. he's well, he wasn't really a major character um, at all throughout the novel, but it's a really interesting way to get into the mind of Rorschach, how he looks at, um, how he looks at, actually looks at Rorschach and what he thinks of him. You know, mm-hmm. based on everything that we actually know of Rorschach throughout these first six issues. Right. And uh, and Dr. Malcolm Young is an interesting character. Like you said, he sort of just shows up here. Mm-hmm. He's got a few tie-ins to the world that we'll talk about. But he's sort of optimistic about about Rorschach here at the beginning. Yes, So he's optimistic, very optimistic that Rorschach is responding to treatment. And he says, I'm convinced I can help him. No problem is beyond the grasp of a good psychoanalyst. And they tell me I'm good with people. <laughs> so he has a very high opinion of himself. And in addition to that, um, you know, if you look at page one, look, if you look at the face he's making in that middle panel of the nine. Right. Where he's sort of got his pen in his mouth. And mm-hmm. he looks sort of arrogant and mm-hmm. sort of like. You know, the look on his face is one of almost like satisfaction. Like he's like, oh, he's yeah. this guy's going to be fine. He's a pretty confident. butterfly. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, he can figure him out, you know, solve him, help him, mm-hmm. um, you know, save him, you know, if you will, and everything because he's, you know, a top psychiatrist. And literally in, within four panels, you know, immediately the Rorschach is playing this guy. <laughs> I mean, like there's no, it's whiplash right away. Like there's no lead up or runway or like a position where maybe, 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 you know, yep. uh, maybe he, you know, this guy's got a handle on it. Nope. Right away. Yep. A pretty, just, a pretty butterfly. Just telling him what he wants to hear, you know, in that great Christian Bell voice that he has, you know. I see a pretty <laughs> butterfly. <laughs> Yeah, he oh, says he his responses to on um, Rorschach block tests were surprisingly bright and positive and healthy. Um, I really think he might be getting better. <laughs> I just wish he wasn't so intense. Oh man, so you know he's a little, he little bit he's a little bit intimidated by um you know Rorschach, but he's still want he's still intrigued because you know he thinks he can just help him. You know, so mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's he's optimistic, so he's convinced though that nobody's ever tried to understand this guy, and he's you know just a sick person. And so we see another ink blot here, and this ink blot is less like a butterfly. It sort of looks like maybe caterpillars laying next mm-hmm. to each other or something like that. Mm-hmm. And and we're, we're what happens here? So we're sort of taken into what Walter really sees, what, what uh, Walter Kovacs or Rorschach really sees here. Mm-hmm. And he remembers his um, his mother, who is um, you know seems to be a prostitute, right? Uh, with a client, and he kind of comes in and says, "What are you doing?" And the the guy, the John, gets upset and leaves and throws her five bucks and and takes off and then uh his mother is abusive toward him blames him for what happened and hits him and smacks him and you know it it hurts him yeah this 
this um this page here is just all types of wrong here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, number one, you know, number one, you wouldn't really see this in a um like a regular superhero comic and everything. So, oh no, you know, <laughs> really, see. really, really um really different adult way of coming about you know comic books back in the in the eighties as we'll just keep alluding to and just keep referring to different way of storytelling. And, you know, origin telling, you know, this mm-hmm. is what he saw <laughs> when he, so think um, about, yeah, go ahead. So think about how he sees his mother here, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and compare, and so, so in the context here, you know, Rorschach does not like, he's misogynistic, he hates women, does not like his mother. It's very, you mm-hmm. know, it, this apparent. is not news, it's right. just how he is. Super apparent. So he's, he's, so he's very against his parents. His, he thinks his mother is, is like the worst type of person. Mm-hmm. And think about how that, how we juxtapose that with how superheroes in our reality are viewed. And right. think about how we think of like Batman's parents or even, even Superman's parents. And I mean both sets right. of Superman's parents. Even pa, Ma, Pa, Kent right. and, you know, the, the L's. Uh, are you know sort of selfless and positive and viewed as yeah yeah know, so th- that's you. that's a super great point because you really don't see any well, as far as I've read them you don't really see any flaws they haven't been written they haven't been written with any flaws so we don't really get into like the backgrounds and like the the intricacies of like you know mom yeah. pa Kent and everything the story is we centrally see... yes yeah, centrally we... you know focus on Superman. Right, we don't see Thomas Wayne's gambling habit. No, you know what I mean. No, like we don't see no. that stuff. <laughs> we don't. We don't say. You know, we don't see also his um, you know, um, infidelities and everything. You know, right. Um, you know, yeah, being, Martha, him being the Marthas belay- aren't out there, <laughs> you know, doing work like this. So. <laughs> right, right, and uh, and and. Uh, to bring up that point, I mean, you assume him being a philanthropist and everything, Thomas Wayne, that he may mm-hmm. have had like you know discretion and stuff, but you know, of course, we don't go into that. Um, right. I mean, he was a doctor. These people are perfect. They're mm-hmm. so the, this this the action in this classic superhero story is the severing of that link between the parents. You know. Right. So when when Pa Kent dies, or mm-hmm. Batman's parents are murdered, mm-hmm. or, or the elves send Kal El away from Krypton to, to save to send him off to right. save his life as their planet mm-hmm. explodes, that break is what causes the superhero origin right that's what that's the the pain Uh that they feel that they need to assuage and for rorschach he sees that in exactly the opposite what causes him pain what 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 underlies everything for him is Mm -hmm. a broken relationship because his mother was there that's because her actions harmed such 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 a really great astute interpretation well not even interpretation but just a great viewpoint of you know how um of the, of that of that split of that break of how he you know it, it, you know ends up seeing like the world and mm-hmm. what makes Rorschach Walter yes. Kovacs <laughs> why does he hate women why does because he, he does not it's because he hates his mother and he hates his mother because of the things she did so so that's sort of where that comes from right that underlying sort of sense of of uh you know uh, of of harm, I suppose that, that he feels from yeah. the relationship. So I mean, so basically, you know, he sees, um, he, he sees his um mother in the middle of having sex with a John, you know, mm-hmm. which is just, just probably, he has no interpret, he has no wherewithal of what is happening at that moment until he actually grows up and knows what he, you know, remembers what happened and find right. and uh, and has to interpret that and you know dissect that and you know psychologically deal with that. In the meantime, knowing that his mom was a you know prostitute and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. so at this point he's not knowing anything. He's just thinking someone is hurting, you know, hurting his mom. <laughs> yes, you know. Um, so he's in like protection mode, but his mom is just, you know, confusing him because she's, um, the very next page, you know, he, (laughs) he, she, she ends up slapping him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So she, she blames him for him coming in. Like she's Mm -hmm. like, you know, she, this is a very, this is a, an awful thing. And so he, he relives this traumatic psychological, this terrible experience, this awful experience from his childhood. Mm Mm-hmm. And then he stare. You see the look in his eyes at the beginning of bottom of page, the top of page five here. Where he's looking at the the card, mm-hmm. and he looks just like 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 beat up. Like he looks angry. And then in the next panel, he says, "Some nice flowers." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, he like call it. Doctor Young is ready to believe that, like right away. He's like, "Yes, <laughs> excellent." <laughs> yeah, I mean, it kind of makes you think. Okay, this is a top psychiatrist and everything. Um, mm. um, and he's just ready to. He's just so cocky and confident in his efforts to to ooh, to ooh. to bring down. <clears throat> excuse me, to figure out this really top villain. I mean, not villain. I'm sorry, the vigil, vigilante 
that mm. they've been trying to um get under wraps for so long and everything and finally he had he he's the one to actually dissect him you know so yep. he's feeling like super confident and everything just to go back a page with um yeah yep. with Kovacs here Rorschach as a youngin <sighs> I can't help but feel sorry for him in this fourth um panel here you know he's traumatized man you mm -hmm. know he's mm -hmm. like okay you know mom what just happened you know, and his mom just, you know, slaps the crap out of him. You know, he calls him, she calls him a little shit, you know, and yeah. he's just like, um, oh, you know, mom, what happened? And, you know, um, she, she goes on to, to, I, I don't know if he's, abu if she's abusing him, but you know, that's what the silhouettes, um, sort of interpret. And, yeah. um, the last panel he just is, is, is what he, um, he sees it's a um, Rorschach test and everything. And um, like Scott said, you know, he tells the psychiatrist it's just some nice flowers. Some nice flowers. You know, but it's, it's just it's just really crazy to me. And it sort of makes you put as, as much as what we find out Rorschach has done throughout these first six um, chapters, the first mm -hmm. five chapters um, to really go into this. And it'd be really fun to um, hear Holly, <laughs> your wife's I interpretation. Know. Is, um, you know, Rorschach is not a good person. You know, no. but this actually puts some uh, this this puts some sympathy, you know, into his um, you know, into his whole origin story, I guess. Yeah. And, and like you're saying, this origin story feels like a villain origin story, right? Mm -hmm. This is a negative thing that happened. It's, yes. it's a bad thing. It's right. like the type of thing you'd hear from. Not a typical like a, superhero origin story. A huh? bank robber or something being mm -hmm. like, when I was young, all mm -hmm. this happened to me. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. it really shows you the otherness of Rorschach. Rorschach is not accepted by these people. Right. Um, and he is taken away from this mostly pause. He kind of smiles at the doctor a little bit, which is odd. Mm -hmm. And then they take him away. He says, I'll see you tomorrow. As they're walking him back to his cell block, they start just throwing insults at him and they start, you know, yelling at him like you would, you know, uh, imagine they would. Yeah. They do not like, like Rorschach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to, he's saying you're going to crap your pants. You know what I mean? So you're going to make in your grays man <laughs> which i guess is the best insult <laughs> you know they're prisoners they're not you know the, the <laughs> smart these are the guys that got caught they're not the smartest criminals um so they cat call them one of the one of my favorite ones here is that before before we move away from rorschach being put in his cell uh -huh. one of the final literally one of the final comments is just you stink rorschach like, come on <laughs> that's as good as you could do could you have everyone else is yelling all this crazy like real threatening violence like stuff and then you're like i'll get him you stink, <laughs> you stink. <laughs> yeah i got him Oh, I always man. thought that was a really funny little, and it's underneath. So that that's underneath another bubble. So mm -hmm. it's under, like some, kind of something you would hear underneath, like the you know the murmuring a little bit. So it's just sort right, of fun. right, yeah. Great uh, way to um side. to put the um blurb, you know, um the, the 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 blurbs on top of each other just to to insinuate how you know the, the various prisoners are just yelling at him and everything. So great way of um positioning those you know um talk bubbles and everything. Mm hmm. So <clears throat> Rorschach is taken back to a different time now that he's back in his cell. Mm -hmm. And two older, much, much bigger bullies accost him. And they call him a whore son. And they smash a piece of foot in, a fruit in his face. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're just picking on him. And they're both probably, I mean, they're both probably twice his size, right? I mean, they're really, they're like a foot right. two feet taller than him. Right. And uh, so uh, what we find out about Rorschach is that when he finally loses his temper, he's extremely dangerous. Because he pulls this, he rips the cigarette out of the one kid's mouth and stabs it in his eye, and then bites the piece of the other kid's face off, just like a, like a, just, a, just a little, feral. Yeah, 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 like a little animal, <laughs> like feral survival instinct. Like you know what I mean? Mm. Like, uh, like he was backed into a corner and he couldn't get out of it, and he's just like, well, okay, the only way out is for me to just, just be exceedingly violent, and yeah. so he does it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at this point, uh, up until this point of his age, who knows how he's been raised? You know, his mom mm -hmm. is, you know, doing what she's doing and everything. You know, dad's not around, obviously. You know, he's just yep. fending for himself. He's, you know, uh, um, uh, a kid who um, probably just <laughs> has always been like, you know, um, uh, uh, picked upon and everything. And, you know, mm -hmm. he's just at this point, he's just super mad and pissed and everything and ready to lash out. Yep. 
and he does the most effective things he can, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, I would say belies intelligence. But that's uh, that's <laughs> using using that what's around you in the most for the most vicious possible attack is the sort of thing that like Alexander the Great would have done. You know? I mean, those sorts of cra- those sorts of psychopaths, you know what I mean? That run the world. Um, that run the, the world. Literal world history right. around the world anyway in mm-hmm. 300 BC. Um, so we cut back from this outburst, this violent, surprising outburst. We cut back to Rorschach's adult face. He's just sitting there thinking about that in his prison cell. Yeah. Oh, uh, As, uh, cu- cut back a couple panels. Just look at the um, blurbs on top of each other. So, you know, he's biting the, um, you know, the, the kids and stuff. Um, and everybody around him is just being super judgmental, even though they, they see everything that's going on. Um, you know, one blurb says, blame the parents, you know. Um, mm-hmm. You know, one is saying, like an animal, mad like a mad dog, you know, exactly like a mad dog. And um, mm-hmm. somebody should be locking up, you know, see him biting that. Um, so so I guess if you want to call it ju- judgmental, you can because you don't know the background of what he's going through. So they're just really just going at him and just figuring it. Um, you know, he's just a super bad kid and everything. But mm-hmm. now, I guess not to put a, um, you know, a thing on people who do crazy and, you know, stupid stuff and violent stuff and everything. But I guess if you want to put a um, background, everybody has a background. You know, everybody yep. has things that they actually went through to 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 um to make them who they are. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and bring them to a certain point and everything. I guess that's one of the things that they're really telling us about Rorschach. There's a reason why he is the way he is. Whether you like it or not, whether you um you know sympathize with him or not, there is a reason. So it's up to you. Which is the whole interpretation of Rorschach, you know, ink blots mm-hmm. and everything. It's up to you to decide whether you figure this guy is really a good guy or really a bad guy. Yep, and we see this violence here. It's it's a um, <clears throat> it's what has been sent to him, right? So like what what has been delivered to him by his mother is violent is violence solves problems, right? And so that's what he's doing here. He's got this problem and he solves it. It's like the shortest distance between point A and point B is putting that kid's light out with a cigarette. Like he won't right. mess with me no more. Right. So he solves that problem. He wins. The, so it's like he wants to win that fight and then the next 50 fights he has with that kid all at once. Well, like you said, like Alexander the Great. I mean, a yes. lot of the, <laughs> you know, you use all the resources that you have around you to win. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the whole pro- the whole purpose of it is to win and to rule and everything, you know. Yes. So his uh, if if in, in another society, <laughs> this will be considered, OK, you just you're just surviving. You're just finished. So you did what you had to do. But in right. this society interpretation, he's a mad dog. It's not the, those kids, not, not those, those kids. bullies. Yeah, right, right, right. He's the mad dog. Him. He's the, um, you know, crazy person. Yep. I just read a. Uh, I just finished reading a book on the Battle of Stalingrad. Okay. In World War Two, mm-hmm. uh, Enemy at the Gates. Uh, super interesting. Okay. Uh, and uh, that sort of, you know, relentless, violent mm-hmm. sort of outburst is just exactly what they were exhorting. All the, the Russians were exhorting from them troops hmm. after the Germans sort of captured the city. Just okay. sort of use anything, fight to the last bullet. Right. Sort of resource, you know, use everything you can. Is just sort of prevalent in that army. So, like you were saying, mm-hmm. it really depends on where you are and what sort of you know, how your reaction is judged by society. Yeah, societal interpretations, you know. I mean, it's not right or wrong. It's just the way, um, you know, society was, you know, back then. And now it's, it's, it's all about interpretation, you know, to that point. Mm-hmm. And how, to, and how so, what the society rules are at that point in time. So how do you think, how do you think our, like, current society would, would view this a little differently than, like, 19, I mean, I guess this is probably around 1950, 51 New York. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously I think now we would definitely, those kids would have been in, those bullies would have been in a lot more trouble now. Like they would have been like, well, you shouldn't have been doing that. That's pretty much, you know what I mean? I feel like that's kind of how we would, uh, well, I I guess if you want to go a little bit into like the social media aspect of it, you know, Mm -hmm. something like this, you know, if it was like, you know, all on the news and everything, social media got his hand. It's a thing right now where social media has his hands holes, on, you know, hand holds on everything. So everybody has a um, opinion. Everybody has an interpretation, you know, so it's, something like this happens, you know, and, um, you know, it gets reported. And then you start finding out about, OK, well, these these two kids, they, you know, were continually bullying this guy and everything. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. the, um, the, the sympathy, you know, goes back to, you know, Rorschach. Well, he had a reason to do what he had to do. You know, he right. had to defend himself and because, of all, you know, those bullies. 
So, um, you know, there's a, a element of bullying, you know, now in to say, you know, in a, in a, in today's society, you know, we just don't like bullying, you know, because yeah. of, you know, school shootings and everything and things that could be, you know, lead, lead to that and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, you know, in today's society, especially with social media, it would be various interpretations, um, and, um, judgments based on, um, you know, one side is this and one side is that. Mm hmm. I think that we're a lot better at seeing that that the, the harm in that interaction goes both ways. Yes. And that you know, obviously the the in media people see what what, what Walter Rorschach here has done is bad, and mm -hmm. obviously there's plain harm that's been done to the the bullies, mm -hmm. but they don't really see the harm that's been done to Walter by the bullies. They only see the right. final result, I and mean, because Walter kind of won the fight, they're like, oh, he must have been right. the at fault person here. Well, I guess I, I ideally you don't want any violence to happen. So number one, the bullies, I mean, they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. But at the same mm -hmm. time, uh, Walt, Walter shouldn't react the way that he should, you know, Maybe not quite as or, well. I or, mean, if, you're or, saying... or if you put if you could put should in quotations, you know, right. Because like I mean, like we were talking about, we this is the culmination of what um, Walter has been, um, you know, um, leading up to at this point based on his mm -hmm. um um, the way he's been raised so far, you know, the so weak, the weak are preyed upon by the strong. Yes. And that's how it should be. That's the natural order of the world. Is that's the natural it. order of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of awful. And uh, <laughs> kind of uh, maybe a little bit of insight into what does uh, got this guy so mad about <laughs> literally Man, everything. Yeah. <laughs> totally a complex character. Great, 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 great. Great character, complex. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, whether he's good or bad, it's up to you to decide. You're reading a book. Exactly. So we are we are now treated uh, to Dr. Young, who's working on Rorschach's case file at home in the night. His wife is making an attempt to distract him from his work. Wink, wink. <laughs> and, and he is as focused on fixing Rorschach. He thinks he can do it. Mm -hmm. He feels like he's making pro progress, so he feels like his work... Uh, is currently, you know, uh, productive for him. Um, so uh, so uh, one thing, <laughs> remember a few chapters ago, maybe it was chapter three or even chapter two uh, of when we first met Dr. Manhattan and um, Lori, you know, mm -hmm. um, and we're going into like their background. Uh, maybe it was chapter three. So this is sort of like a good um, uh, 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 a parallel to what, um, Lori and um, Dr. Manhattan were going through with their intimacy problems. So she's trying to get his attention and he's just focused on his work. The same he's way. He's obsessed with comic <coughs> books. <laughs> he is. He's ignoring women because he's obsessed with the story of this comic book character. I mean, I, I, that feels like the parallel to me, right? When Dr. Manhattan gets too into his sci fi, uh -huh. right? Yeah, right. I mean, right, he gets distracted right. from his other pursuits. Right. Yeah. Same thing with this guy. When he gets too into Rorschach, right, he's reading Rorschach number one, right? Mm -hmm. Like we are. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's yep. too into it and mm -hmm. he's uh and he's ignoring his, his husbandly it, duties. Yeah, he can't he can't focus on anything else and everything. So it's a really good parallel to um, you know, men and you know, they're they're just being so focused on their work and everything, they sort of mm -hmm. um, ignore all their their like Scott was saying, husbandly duty. <laughs> Focused, focused on their work, focused on Star Wars, focused on, you know, Watchmen, making a podcast with a whole bunch of episodes, ignoring oh, their husband. Man, uh, <laughs> you got to balance that out, guys, is gotta, what we're gotta saying. You got to balance that out. can't be or, Dr. Or, or, or else, you know, the house will go bad. You know, you might end mm -hmm. up out in those streets and stuff. So, yep. you know, or because you, might you have an emotional responsibility to your to mm -hmm. your partner. You can't you can't be ignoring them to live in your own little world. Yeah. defined by a you know at work or anything that's it's important it's an important little thing there i think that makes it speaks to me bottom line is um his wife is concerned because he's just <laughs> he's just way too focused <laughs> because nothing else matters nobody else matters we're both happy right mm -hmm. it's like why are you feeling so much empathy for this character that's rorschach right <laughs> um one thing i want to mention here at the top of the page mm -hmm. this is where he says that he did he did really well at school Mm -hmm. And he was quiet, but his mother was murdered brutally. Mm -hmm. And when he found out about it, he did not uh, vow to get revenge or put the perpetrator behind bars or mm -hmm. <clears throat> clean up the city. Mm -hmm. He just said good. Mm. 
He just said good at the age of 16 when being told his mother had been, like, brutally murdered. The word brutally is in the, the text here. So it must have been brutal. And that sounds like the origin good. of a villain, you know. Mm. It does. Okay. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound like, like Batman wouldn't have done that. No, not at all. He wouldn't have been, no. like, good. Superman wouldn't have done that. Peter Parker wouldn't have Mm-mm. done that. Mm-mm. Nope. Mm-mm. Um, but, you know, this is where um, this is where we start with him and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just screams all around, you know. <laughs> um, everybody's everybody's uh, scared by Rorschach. <laughs> yes, Utilitarian they are. nihilism. <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, yeah. Like Scott, he says, you know, he his one word reaction to um, his mom just being brutally murdered is good. So that's good. A, a very good. stark and very alarming reaction to you know one who was birthed. <laughs> mm-hmm. From um, not, you know, from his mom. You know, I will go as far as to say you're not supposed to have that sort of reaction to the death. Not at all. Mother. I'm going to put that out there. You can hate Scott me all day. Mm. You know, I'm 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 going to stand behind. That is not something you would want to say. Being informed of the death of your parents. <laughs> so if you say it, something went wrong. <laughs> something is wrong. Apparently, wrong. you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so the next day, uh, Doctor Young, still optimistic, sits down to interview. Uh, Walter and uh, Walter says you know I don't like you is like the first thing he says I don't <laughs> like you you keep calling me Walter I don't like you and look at and if you look at Dr. Young's face at the bottom left panel here on page 9 look at his face and think about how that compares to to how arrogant his face looked like before right right when he was just like oh we'll get this done he says I, he just comes out and says I don't like you and uh, Dr. Young is like what how could you not like me I'm the doctor who's here with you. I'm here to help you. Well, one thing, he came in there expecting, well, he did not know, um, ex- he came in there expecting the same thing that he's been, you know, going through each time he's been meeting Rorschach. So mm-hmm. this is the first time he's got something different, and it's just, you know, it's taking him aback. You know, he's finally um, responding differently, you know, and he's he's just confused in, so as to, um, you know, how he should, uh, you know, proceed with that. I don't think I don't think Rorschach really hates the fact that he's trying. He's calling him Walter. Mm-hmm. He's telling he's he's like referring to him as like his dead name. Like that name means nothing to me now. Mm-hmm. I'm Rorschach only. I'm no longer Kovacs. <laughs> um, so I I feel like that's part of why he doesn't like him because he's calling him by a name he he's he shed. He doesn't go by that name anymore. Right, right, right. But he also tells him pretty directly why he doesn't like him. He says. <laughs> We don't have to guess. As, as, as Rorschach say. does, you know, because Rorschach is, you know, straight to the point and tells the truth all the time. Yeah, he says, fat, wealthy, <laughs> think you understand pain? Oh, I'll tell you about Rorschach. And then we hear Rorschach's first origin story, oh, right? Man. Rorschach number one starts here. <laughs> so to hit the highlights here. So Rorschach, when he's 16, he's kicked out of the home for kids. Well, not kicked out, I guess. Maybe he's got to learn to trade. He goes in the garment industry. Right. Uh, he says he doesn't like it because he has to handle women's undergarments. And the face he's making there in the first panel on this page is pretty hilarious. He's like, oh! <laughs> you know, that face Doc Brown makes when the um, when the DeLorean catches on fire, that's the face he makes. <laughs> Runs over with the... Uh... Anyway. Um, so, <laughs> that's the model. It's from Back to the Future Part 1. Don't worry about it. Um, so, uh, when he's 16, he gets into the clothing industry. And he finds a dress made with fabric that's from Dr. Manhattan. So, this mm-hmm. is a Dr. Manhattan spin-off fabric. It has viscous fluids... And he thinks it's beautiful. Uh, some Italian girl says she doesn't like it, so he takes it home with him. And he learns how to cut it with heated scissors so it seals the, the liquid in between the fabric so he can make it into different. So he cuts it up so it's no longer a dress. And then a couple years later in 1964, he finds that the, the girl that ordered the dress is murdered, and she's Kitty Geno- Genovese. So if, if you guys did, have not heard of her, mm-hmm. it's a famous case in Manhattan where she is murdered brutally, and people are, people can hear her and they don't intervene. Uh, he says maybe some people even looked at, watched. And right. then he says, so, so I made a face that I could bear to look in the mirror. So he, he is repulsed by his own humanity. His own relationship with this society repulses him so much that he has to put a mask on, a new face, to um you know to so that he can face himself so that he can even move forward because he's so like ashamed of his humanity right and he's also having a um uh you know a flashback of how people are you know um when you know kenny Gen- uh, kitty genovese you know got raped 
tortured, killed, you know, mm-hmm. all, um, outside of their, her apartment building. Everybody's just looking down. Nobody is doing anything. Nobody's calling the police and everything. And, you know, his, his, his. I, <laughs> <hold on. laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's crazy, right? You know? So, um, yeah, nobody is, um, you know, calling the police. So his interpretation of, of how callous people are, you know, how cold people are and, um, you know, the way that, um, they just don't do anything is really just taking him, it's, it's, it's taking his toll on. So we're, we're beginning to see this shape of how we're continuing to see the shape of how Rorschach reviews the world and people. Mm -hmm. It's so bleak. He feels, he just sees, you know, all he sees and it's his whole life is, you know, he's treated to the worst type of parent, the worst type of, you know, people in his neighborhood, right. you know, the worst type of education and the worst mm-hmm. the job he hates. Yeah. I mean, he's, you can see that he's, he's, you know, interacted with, you know, the underbelly of society and just sort of been turned along by that so that he doesn't see, he, he's not yeah. encountering any of the good of humanity. Yes. Yeah, does see any good in humanity at all. And remember guys, this is, um, <laughs> Gorshak is about to become a hero, you know? Yep. Yes, this is a hero's origin story. This is the story of this how he decided to take story. on crime. Mm-hmm. This isn't a story yep. about someone who set out to commit a lot of crimes, although I guess he will commit many right, right. process crimes, you want to call them that. Yeah, um, quote unquote. <laughs> whew. So Rorschach mocks Dr. Young. Uh, he says, uh, you think you're good people. Why are you spending so much time with me, doctor? You don't want to make me well. Just want to know what makes me sick, and you'll find out. Have patience, doctor. <laughs> You'll find out. And then he leaves. What a tease, man. I mean, <laughs> oh, I mean, man. he just leaves him with a tease. I mean, okay, you know, man, I mean, I, I, if I was a doc, I would just like, okay, I cannot wait to come yeah. to work the next day. I know. That's so nuts. <laughs> I mean, imagine it. Imagine you just leave on a cliff, a, a, a cliff, yeah, a cliffhanger like that. <laughs> You're like, I got to wait another week. <laughs> yeah, that's how tease you would do it. <laughs> Yeah, this will be the end of the episode, right? Yeah. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> I guess I'll find out next week. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh man! All right. <laughs> so, so the next thing that happens here is uh, Rorschach is threatened by a large inmate with a shiv. He mm-hmm. says, "I got my autograph book in my pocket. I've got some pretty famous names over the years." And Rorschach just sort of ignores everything he says. But then reaches across the chow line, picks up a vat of burning hot oil and throws it in his face without really so much as another word or flinch or warning. And just like, nope, you've you've crossed the line. That's it. One of the craziest Bur- sequence of this novel. <laughs> just out of nowhere, it just burns the guy's face like off with the, the hot oil. You know, it just melt his melt the flesh in his face. And, mm. you know, Dr. Young is at home sort of uh, describing the action to us as he drinks coffee in his office at night. Uh, his wife comes in clearly in the need of of, uh, of sex. Like clearly, she's looking. She's yes. looking for sex. Uh, but Doctor Young she's is demanding. Obsessed. She's demanding it. It's time. It's, it has to happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, he says, "Maybe we can talk. Maybe we can, you know, have a con." And then she just leaves because she's not doesn't want any more talk. And as she leaves, the doctor uh, thinks about it. Well, Rorschach yelled as they dragged him away, which is, "You're all you're you're locked in here with me." Right, you're not, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me, and he says he's right, absolutely right. So Doctor Young is now feeling trapped with Rorschach. Yeah, yeah. Rorschach got his. Rorschach has a tight control over his world. He is not intimidated by it. He's mm-hmm. not, you know, afraid of it. You know, he he he's very comfortable in the fact of how his world is. Rorschach does not get rattled or get shaken or anything like that. So. One of the turning points in, um, you know, the way we, we, we see him through these, you know, these next couple pages or these these past couple pages here in the prison and the way, um, um, you know, the psychiatrist and, um, you know, interprets him and everything is we don't see any type of expression on Rorschach's face whatsoever. You know, right. so he's not phased by anything that these these prison, you know, prisoners are, you know, trying to intimidate him and going back. And I think that's one of the things that um, made me turn around and just you know favor Rorschach as a, a, a quote-unquote great character which mm-hmm. is probably the thing that Alan Moore did not want people to take from this 
this um this this graphic novel. Right, it wasn't right. meant to be for Rorschach to be this hero, this you know this uh, this this thing, this character to be revered like Batman. You know he's right. not Batman. You know he's not no. um. You know he's he shouldn't be the favorite. Bat, uh, Rorschach is not a good person. You know, mm -hmm. so for him to do this and everything may it may seem like sort of a badass type of thing. You know, but it's not. You know, it's just not. <laughs> he will defend himself by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I just finished that book, so it's in my head. It's exactly like how I think we when you talk about the context of World War II and how you think about Stalin, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Stalin. If you think about the the German Soviet War, Stalin is seen as the as the hero in that, and I'm probably rightly so. Although, mm -hmm. you know, he is not by any stretch of the imagination a heroic person. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that he did, to, you know, to <laughs> to get his his nation through that conflict were terrible, awful. I mean, right, he, he right. sacrificed millions of lives just, just because he, he well, had to. And, and, and you know, it, that was after he'd spent the last 20 years solidifying his grasp on power and sending millions of people to the gulag and planning famines and things. And, you know, he's just a very... Rorschach strikes me as a very just tough, tough person. Yeah, And yeah. I think that regardless of their motivations and what somebody does with that, I think we are sort of, we admire that. Right. As people. Right. And right. that's what we admire about Rorschach. It's that lack of compromise. He will not compromise. Right. And he will, by the, any means necessary, the, the, defend the, himself. The, and... the ability to survive, to do anything to survive. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a thing, I guess, within all of us, you know, as, as, as I guess as human beings to, um, we have all our ways to, to survive. But some people, you know, are really put to the test and pressured and really have to do a lot more to fight. You know, and that I, I guess it, well, it's like maybe this is what you're saying is that they have to fight to, you know, um, to live in this world, to 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 do the things that they need to do. So the the interpretations of a hero and a villain is left up to the in, it's in the eye of the beholder, you know, mm -hmm. um, something that could be, you know, interpreted as, you know, a, a hero's, you know, plight and everything is the exact opposite um, of the person that actually being is being affected by the hero's plight, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so you, you talk about Stalin and everything that he did and everything, you know, he's looked upon as a hero in a, in a certain aspect, but in those, that context, in that Let's context, be very clear about that. Yeah. Yeah. In that context, but in, a, um, in, in, but to the people he was actually hurting and everything, he's looked upon as a villain. Yep. That's it. That's true. And, you know, one of the things that, uh, that I really, 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 you know, really, really enjoy about, uh, this particular, uh, little scene here. This little, this little, um, this uh, fight that he has in the in the prison. Right. Is that he doesn't fight fair. That guy's got a got a shiv. He doesn't say let's fight. Let's have a fist fight, and I'll best you. He just disposes of the trash. Right. Using what he has. Right. Uh, it's it's so different than what you would see from like I don't know like Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. You know. Right. Or like I don't know even Goku from Dragon Ball Z. You know what I mean? He wouldn't want to have an unfair fight, but Rorschach doesn't care because he doesn't see the the uh, the other participant in the, in the fight as having any value. So he just disposes of the trash. Well, maybe you can also look at it too as maybe an Americanized version of okay, well, okay, in in a, in the, in an Americanized, you know, because Alan Moore he's from you know England, in a, in a, and um, um, um in, in it's a way of actually just looking at okay. You you in a in a um uh in in this prison sequence here you would have had that um okay well let's fight you know let's go ahead and you know sanitize this and actually make it into a way where it could be more sane more mm -hmm. um you know more you know palatable or whatever you know to like the viewer to the um to the reader or what have you to make it um a little bit more less violent and everything but no he goes straight to the most violent the most simplest which is probably the most hum um I, if you want to call it humane the most logical um surviving aspect get the vat pour it on the guy you know um and dispatch it to trash just like that mm -hmm. no need for a fight why go for a fight what's the it doesn't make any sense to do that why fight the next guy that's going to just come up to you Right? Like, if you say, oh, let's have a fair fight and square off and have fisticuffs, guess what? The next guy in line is going to get in line. You pour a vat of, you know, boiling hot cooking oil on someone's face, and that's not, that's the type of consequence that makes a man think twice. Yep. So there's exactly. a deterrence, there's a deterrence as well. There's a, um, one of the uses for the law is a, um, it's designed to provide a positive example, right? So it's designed to say, if you follow the law, you'll be living the way we want you to live as a society. 
One of the other things the law does is it's designed to deter malefactors, right? So if you think, oh, I would murder this person, oh, but I'd get caught and then put in the electric chair. That's the sort of thing, right? So there's this there's this retributive, like he sees value in that retribution. Right. right? He sees a basic value in that, which is super interesting. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. (laughs) Rorschach is a um he's a very complex character to say the least. Yes. So Rorschach says he started out soft. I let them live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? And the doctor says, you weren't really violent other than these murders you say you didn't do until about 1975. And Rorschach tells him, you know, uh, I met, you know, we worked with Night Owl, we captured the big figure and the underboss, mm-hmm. and, you know, he got quit and he got soft, and so we stopped working together. And he right. talks about the comedian, and he says, of all of us, he understood the most about the world, about people, and about society. So Rorschach identifies with this nihilistic worldview of the comedian, which is everything is going to burn. So there's nothing good about it. He doesn't see anything that's good in society, right? So the, right. the comedian decides to act I- immorally, like intentionally right. as a response to that. And then he says, we do it because we are compelled. And then contact with society's grim aspects has made Rorschach grimmer, even worse. And then he says, Gloria is interested in sweetening things at home. He invites uh, Randy and Diana to dinner, which are their friends. But uh, Dr. Young is too exhausted to take Mm -hmm. in all the details. And so the next day, Rorschach decides to tell him everything. Decides to tell him what he really sees and show him and remove his mask and show him who Rorschach really is. Yes, a funny thing on um, the Rorschach decision to start telling them things because, I mean, he doesn't essentially have to, but maybe Rorschach is bored, Mm -hmm. you know, and feels that he has to do, you know, something during these meetings to get some something, you know, something out of it, you know, even if it's not, it doesn't really have anything to do with Rorschach himself, Mm -hmm. but, you know, to, um, I guess, give this guy something, you know, just, um, you know, just, uh, I don't know, maybe not even to amuse himself. (laughs) <laughs> just to give him something. Yes. And uh, that something is what he really sees when he looks at that ink blob, which is a dog with its head split in half. Mm-hmm. And he asks him, who did it? And he says, I did it. Uh, and uh, Rorschach then describes the Blair Roche kidnapping case. He says he put 14 people in the hospital, and on the 15th person he got a tip. And that was a disused dressmaker, which is in effect, what Rorschach is. Right. He's a disused dressmaker. He's a dressmaker who doesn't do that work anymore. So this scene is incredible. The art on this scene, there's almost no dialogue, no words, period, on the next, like, four or five pages. Right. And it's very, you know, if you compare it to how he solves the case at the comedians, right, how he finds all the comedian stuff. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's very interesting to see his investigation and what he looks for. He finds the uh, underpants of the teddy bear on him. And in the upstairs, he finds the uh, implements of murder uh, or food preparation. You know, they're the same thing, I guess, except for the hacksaw. And then in the ba- he notices the cutting board. And in the backyard, he sees the dog fighting over a bone that he realizes suddenly is a human bone. Yeah, um, I think when I first read this, it was, and I was very young when I read it, Mm -hmm. it was very disturbing, very disturbing, and disturbing from the aspect, of course, they don't show us anything that happened. Right. They only show uh, show us um, Rorschach, um, you know, um, deducing everything that, you know, went down as far as what happened with this, with this unfortunate, heartbreaking situation, and just to, you know, um, have that, those thoughts in your mind of what, you know, what did happen. It's, it's just heartbreaking. And then to see these dogs out in the back. <laughs> yeah. You know, chewing on the bone and everything. and Fighting Rorschach, over it. Fighting over it, you know. And we see the, you know, the last panel where it looks like it's a surprise. On Rorschach. We don't see, you know, Rorschach's actual face. But we we get him in a surprise, you know, um, type of, you know, once he realizes what exactly happened. Mm-hmm. He's sort of like that red. It's mm-hmm. like a, almost like he he sees he sees the red he sees it clearly yeah he's yeah, yeah and then he yeah, gets a yeah. cleaver and goes on the backyard of the dogs who seem sort of I don't know like happy to see him almost <laughs> like like okay and then he he uh, 
he uh, he says it was Kovacs who said mother, and closed his eyes, and it was Rorschach who opened them again. So this is his origin story. That's it. <laughs> this, this, is, is, this is Rorschach. This is who he came to be. <laughs> this is giant size Rorschach number one in 1975. <laughs> the tenth anniversary. You know. Man, um, yeah, so this is not your um, typical uh, great deconstruction of how a superhero or hero, you know, comes to, to actually, you know, be if it was if, if this was actually real life. It comes you know, down like, to, you know, it, you're right. And it comes down to what is justice? I mean, that's the mm-hmm. real question. And that's a question that I think superheroes uh, ignore sometimes when they don't when right. you don't think about what is right. right. And, you know, uh I mean, this is a pretty. This is as bad of a crime as you can really conceive of, right? It's like the worst yeah, possible, yeah. The worst, worst possible. possible crime. Yeah. And yeah. what is just to happen? Like, is, is anything that happens to this guy in the next couple of pages like unjust? <laughs> Does it feel? Do you feel bad about what happens to him at all? Do you feel any sympathy toward him? I mean, his pets, mm-hmm. are maybe toward the dogs for having such a crappy owner. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, right. It's hard to to what it's hard to to read those next couple pages about how Rorschach disposes of this person and honestly feel like that's that's bad all right so um so Rorschach you know it's it's just sad what happens with the uh with the pets because they they unfortunately have the benefit um or unfor- unfortunate benefit of having a crappy owner yeah. you know and uh Rorschach nevertheless he doesn't care they did something so despicable that you know he has he has no choice but to dispense this type of justice. I mean, they upon... got a taste for human flesh. Yeah, 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 right? exactly. Like that's... that's that's oh man, you know, and he 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 dispatches the um you know the um the pets first, mm-hmm. and um you know we get it interspersed with him talking to the you know the psychologists and everything, and he finally reveals what the initial um, first panel of this issue what he the, the um. <laughs> what he um, interprets this um, Rorschach ink blot to actually be, mm-hmm. right? You know, and uh, and the, this, I mean these 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 pages are so excellent, and the way they're drawn and everything, and the way it tells the story of what he does here. Um, my favorite piece, just um, you know, apart uh, my my least favorite piece is that the the book makes sure you know the dogs' names, which are Fred and Barney, which just made me sad. I, obviously, I have dogs as we've heard right. today, right? Uh, so I like dogs. Um, and Rorschach sort of throws the dogs through the window and sort of hits, beats the man up with his dogs. And then he handcuffs him to a stove and starts pouring stuff around, hands the guy a hacksaw. And the murderer says, Hey, Hey, are you crazy? That's kerosene. And Rorschach says, yes. (laughs) He just says, yes. Shouldn't bother trying to saw through the handcuffs. You'll never make it in time. And he drops a match and walks out and watches it burn for an hour. He says, nobody got out. And there you have the origin of Rorschach. Um, yes. So before uh, he even starts with, um, you know, going to this guy's place, you know, trying to find like the, um, you know, the baby. You know, we see Rorschach um, in his adventuring, as Scott was saying, with um, Night Owl and, you know, the meeting with the, the um, crime busters and him dispatching a um, um uh, thug in the alley and everything. So this mm-hmm. was all, you know, Rorschach just, you know, just being just regular Rorschach, or just Walter Kovacs as, you know, Rorschach. And then, you know, once this event happens and, you know, the, the toll it takes on him and everything, just mm-hmm. to, it, we're already see we already seen, you know, Rorschach growing up. He's seeing like the most depraved. I mean, he, he's seeing like the, the the craziness of humanity, and it already he already has in his in his mind, you know how humans are, how people are, and just how cold and callous they are, and everything. This proves his point so much mm-hmm. that you know it's it's, it's 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 probably not even shocking to him at this point. But he's he's had it. He's had it up to here. He's done. You yep. know when it when it when it when when you feed a baby. You know, to pets who have no wherewithal of you know what their owner is. It's just, it's just, uh, it's a, it's a, it's it is an actual crime. So he doesn't think the dogs are redeemable. <laughs> he doesn't even think That's the dogs are re- exactly right, right, right. So, um, so what could have been an origin story for a villain actually ends up becoming a um, you know, origin story for you know what 
eventually is a um a a, a costume hero. You know, I guess. Well, he starts out as a costume hero. It, I think it's debatable what he does after after seventy five. Okay. Wh- whether that's heroic or not, and, and I think that's that's important. Are are, are these people that commit these acts? Mm-hmm. Are they do you know any sort of process? I mm-hmm. mean, in this case, in this case, I feel like we've been provided with a controvertible proof of the person's guilt. Right. 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 So, you know, that's that's a, but that's the thing. Like Rorschach's making that determination, right? Right. Yeah, you know who I mean? is the judge? Who is the jury? You yeah. know, um. <laughs> I mean, we've seen how petty he is. We saw him at, at yeah. Jacoby's house saying, "Like, ooh, these apricot pills are bad." Right? And he's like, "There, I'm using them, man. <laughs> like, I'm not. Like, I'm the scammy. <laughs> I'm not the scammer here." But this is the point where he just snaps. You yeah. know, he he. This is you know everything that he was and you know figured out and everything up to this point. This you know this is where he just snaps and just becomes this 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 cold cold body you know um and you know rorschach the the mask um the you know the fabric that's over his face is his face is his skin you know Mm -hmm. um this is that batman tendency where bruce wayne is really the um the um the fault the false person batman is the actual person you know um he disregarded kovacs you know kovacs is no more rorschach is the um is the is the is a person in his body you know, mm-hmm. and this is who he defines Rorschach to be in this moment. Crazy. Yes. <laughs> birth, the birth of Rorschach. The birth of Rorschach, you know. <laughs> the real Rorschach. <laughs> but it had been bubbling under the surface for all that time, and it can't, finally came out. So now he's no longer feels society's, like he no longer feels the answerable to society's concepts of justice. There's yeah. only yeah, absolute justice that he imposes on society. So I guess the question, is he right? You know, um, based on everything that he, if, if mm, you, you can't really say, okay, if you went through this, would you interpret things the same way? But every, is he, every philosophical discussion like this, where you, where you, you have mm-hmm. a conversation where you're talking about right and mm-hmm. wrong and justice okay. and, and, and not justice mm-hmm. is it all comes down to perfect knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. So if you could know whether, if you could know the truth about something, you can make a determination one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And the criminal justice system, as we've constituted, is essentially our best shot at getting that perfect, right? Right. So what's dangerous is if Rorschach suddenly, you know, starts accepting <clears throat> lesser, you know, evidentiary standards than what he's found here with mm-hmm. the remains and the implements and the evidence of the person. You know what I mean? He has all that together. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you think to get there, he had to do things society wouldn't. He had to right. put 15 people in the hospital to right. get the tip. Right, right. I mean, think about that. Like, the, you know what I mean? Like, that's not something, you know, the, what is it? The Eighth Amendment is very clear about that. We don't do that stuff. Right, right. Um, so you know, it's it's something where only he could have solved this crime. But then again, is is what he did, you know, does that undo the goodness of solving of solving it? Right, you know, does what he does this murder that he's committed, you know, this extrajudicial killing, this this real vigilante killing, mm-hmm. you know, does that undo any of the the positive changes that he would have made? I don't know. You know, um, that's the question, right? That that is that is severely. I mean, you know. It, it's a great question. You know, he actually, um, he may, he makes a point in his fourth channel on, on, um, or poor fourth panel on page 26 existence is random, you know, has no pattern save for what we imagine after staring at it for too long, mm. <laughs> no meaning save for what we choose to impose. So this is Rorschach in a nutshell. He sees mm-hmm. something, you know, mm-hmm. and he interprets it. Based yep. on his 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 you know the random the, I guess the randomness of it and everything he sees a randomly morally blank world. So what he can do is he can scrawl his own mm-hmm. morality on the world. So mm-hmm. he feels free to morally act in the vacuum of morality. He sees there as being no right or wrong mm-hmm. as our society would show it. So he's going to show us how you deal with right and wrong. Right. He is that example. Right. Right. Black and white. No gray. Black and white. And as a mix, stay that, separate. Beautiful. <laughs> so that is so that is definitely poetic. In a nice. very violent chapter, guys. Oh, very man. violent. A very a very beautiful way of 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 of, of, of presenting something so crazy, you know, yes. to us, you know, to um to to really have us understand um a, a, an element of the human condition of the way through the the through the subject of superheroes. Imagine right. that, you know. <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy um and then we have like the last couple panels where the um 
the um the Randy and Diana are over. <laughs> the, the 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 psychiatrist is shocked. <laughs> yeah, he's shook. <laughs> he's messed he's, up. He, 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 Rorschach leaves him. Does that answer any of your questions? <laughs> <laughs> I just no blew morality. your There's mind. Nothing. You know, oh man. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we just get you know going and um, um, the psychiatrist. He you know he he goes walking down the street and uh, we're just treated to different panel shots of him, him and his wife. You know them going out to dinner. Uh, uh, Scott going to the, them going out to dinner in the way the um the the psychiatrist talks to his <gasps> guest. <laughs> oh my goodness this 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 scene here like so okay so I I watch a lot of like investigation discovery and read true crime <laughs> stuff and I'm voyeuristic like that I have that you know I, I think it's interesting to get into the heads of what makes people do evil things it's one of the reasons I like this work so much mm-hmm. so Randy uh, is sort of a, vo- a voyeuristic in the same way so uh, Doctor Young says. Um, yes, he told me about a girl who got kidnapped. And then Gloria's like, hold on, this isn't good dinner conversation. But Randy's like, oh, boy, kidnapped, huh? You're, we're dealing with a superhero. Why did she get gagged and, and tied up? And and then he goes, nope, she was six. Her doctor killed her, butchered her, and fed her to his dogs. And then Gloria's just like, God. Gloria just gets up. She's like, that's it. <laughs> like, you're obsessed, right? And she gets out. She takes off. And then his guests go home, uh, you know, that was way too heavy for dinner conversation. Way I mean, too heavy. Way too heavy. So, so, so throughout this um this chapter here, the wife has been getting on him about getting way too deep into this. Way too mm-hmm. deep. You know, um, maybe to the point where she knows her husband so well that um that he gets so deep into the character of Rorschach or to the person of Rorschach that maybe he can't handle he he has a psych as a psychologist you know psychiatrist can't mm-hmm. handle the information that's being presented to him himself. So the story that uh, Rorschach, you know, tells him is maybe even too much for him. And he snapped, you know. Well, this dude, this dude's problem is that he has too much empathy, right? Mm-hmm. He feels like, oh, I can fix this. I can do this, you know. And I and I talk so much to Rorschach, I'm starting to mm-hmm. empathize with his worldview. It's starting to infect me, this this negativity and this, this, this blackness of his life right. is starting to infect me. And it's the opposite of Rorschach's problem because Rorschach's problem is that his empathy has been – drained out of him right right because right, he's right, not right, no one's right. had any for him his whole life so he just life. doesn't have mm-hmm. any left and finally mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that story he tells is the very tiniest little end of it mm-hmm. leaving his body so he no longer feels empathy at all mm. so he is able to act morally he's able to you know he's able to do things and because you know dr young is almost frozen in his empathy Right, he's impotent. He's unable to act because he's <laughs> feeling all this pity toward Rorschach. Right, right. Because right. there's nothing. We're alone. There's nothing else. This black depression is sort of it's sort of just eating him. Yeah, you know, from the inside, and it's because he is empathetic. And Rorschach would say it's because you're weak. And then we get a Nietzsche quote at the end. Like, my goodness gracious, we get Friedrich Nietzsche at the end here. Yeah, which it's, me is just... it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, you know, the yeah, the Nietzsche quote and everything. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, not not to mention that um, his wife just hurls all types of crude sexual what insults you, and everything. What, <laughs> I, I, in my head, I'm like, I wonder what she said. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Like, what do you, you know, think she said? She, she, she's just so disgusted with this guy, you know, at this point and everything. I told you, I told you, I told you. Now, you know, she's subjecting him to all types of just insults but he doesn't feel anything all he's doing is just looking at the um the the ink block Mm -hmm. the same ink block that was in the first panel guys you know Mm -hmm. and now he's looking at it you know what is what what is his interpretation of this you know Mm -hmm. um and he's just looking at um empty meaning it's blackness and you know the fact that you know they're all alone and there's nothing else so his wife's insults that doesn't mean anything to him it doesn't even Mm -hmm. matter the the panel the page goes to black at the end and like scott was saying you know nietzsche at the end battle not uh, with monsters lest ye become a monster and if you gaze into the abyss the abyss gaze also un, uh, into you mm-hmm. so whatever is looking at you is staring right back at yourself it's a perfect mirror yep yep uh, after the ending of the story we are treated to the uh police informational <laughs> packet about old mm-hmm. Rorschach here which I love uh, these is a good, at the end such of the a chapter. great read such <laughs> a great read I mean it even has like his 
dreams that he had when he was 13 and like things from the Charlton home and mm-hmm. you know things he's wrote about his parents and like little doodles and stuff and and then at the end at the very very end right before we move into the the end of uh, chapter 6 uh-huh. there's a note at the bottom right and it's from Dr. Young and he says uh he promises to be a complex case uh he's got an extreme personality and extreme vigilante activities it could be possible to identify a syndrome uh, in any event, keep notes with an eye to possible future publication. First interview with Kovacs is Friday afternoon. Looking forward to it. So while uh, Rorschach was right, <laughs> right, why are you helping me? It's because right. you want to publish and find out what makes me sick. So he took him down like immediately and cut to the bone like on page one, which I just feel is <sighs> like after all that, right, after finding mm-hmm. out all the horror of what it was like to be him, how he became him and mm-hmm. what he's doing, which is, is wrong. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have to say it was morally wrong to simply murder people when, you know, you live in a society and there's a justice system. Right. Uh, at the very end, we find out that he was 100% absolutely right in his very first takedown of Dr. Young at the beginning of the chapter. Oh, he, he broke him down, like, you boom, know, big time. You know, I see you who you are, mm-hmm. and this is who you are, and this is what you turn out to be anyway. So you know? Rorschach was... So I think that <laughs> the thing we need to take away from this, <clears throat> at the very end of uh, uh, issue six or chapter six... Uh, is that we find out that Rorschach is a monster. (laughs) Rorschach has no empathy. Rorschach thinks the world is evil. And the last thing we find out in Chapter 6 is Rorschach was right. Pretty much. Pretty much. That's heavy. Pretty much. That's That's that's, heavy and very, very well. And and this is little compared to what's about to happen. (laughs) Right. (laughs) This is small potatoes, guys. This is halfway through the um, you know, through this graphic novel and everything. We haven't even gotten to the craziness of. We still don't know who killed the comedian. We still don't know who killed the comedian. We know that someone has neutralized the comedian, Doctor Manhattan, uh, and Rorschach, and has Mm -hmm. attempted to murder Ozymandias. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it. Even if Uh, you know there's not a mass um, murderer, there's definitely mm -hmm. something happening that's getting these people. These people are all getting out of the way all of a sudden in October. Doctor Manhattan has left the galaxy. (laughs) I mean, and this is only two weeks from when the comedian was murdered. Like that happens on like October 11th or something, and this Uh is October 28th. Mm -hmm. So it's not like that. This has not been a long time. Right, it's been a year, and these things have like Mm -hmm. like spaced back and moved back and come forward. It's just been a, a crescendo of danger. You know, ever since ever since that happened, it's set in chain a chain a motion of events that is, you know, uh, we see signs of it in this chapter where, you know, mm-hmm. the, the news is saying President Nixon, you know, promises maximum force and we're seeing, right. you know, alerts right. and I could be escalation. What says, escalation. What's he say about I could be putting Gloria in a garbage bag next week and placing her outside for collection, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. it's just uh, so this is the, the tension of this time is just so it's, everything is just happening, you know, all mm-hmm. at once in a short time span and it's escalating. We just we're just getting escalation. So the tension, the, the, the great thing about this, this, this 12 issue maxi series and everything graphic novel is that, you know, we we get tension, tension filled um you know, um, chapters, you know, leading and we're just feeling it pounce, you know, pulsing and pounding like a heart, just, you know, going harder and harder and harder. One thing I did want to, um, just look at, at this, at the end of this, um, you know, confidential and everything, you know, we see Rorsch, we see Walter Kovacs, 13 year old, I mean, 13, you know, when he was 13 and drew what, um, uh, what was in his dream. <laughs> and it's just, right. It's, it's just, it's just, it looks a you lot know, like that ink blood. Yeah. Yeah, so 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 in the um in the um in the in the um psycho you know psycho um psychiatric evaluation you know he was saying that you know he saw uh, he had a dream and they were sort of clopped together like a horse in a pantomime with two guys in a suit and when they got near us he said he sees uh, um, that they weren't dancing at all they were all squished together like Siamese twins joined at the face chest and stomach they didn't have any face but all you can see you can only see their ears to uh, on the either side of facing each other their hands were growing um, into each other as well but um, they had all four legs free and were sort of dancing sideways towards me down the dark hall like a crab <sighs> This is a um boy that's describing sex. <laughs> his yep. his what what he sees that he doesn't really know about fully in his house with his mom and these wall these these Johns and stuff. So not to say you should have sympathy um to everything that's happening to him, you know, in this in the and the and what he's doing to people in this in this but it's just crazy how he is looking at the world 
and how his world worldview is being formed. His mom was a monster. If you really think about it, you know, yep. if you if you if you want to make a judgment, you know, maybe she was doing it just to survive and everything. You know, she had to um, take care of, you know, Walter and stuff. But Walt, but she's doing it in the worst possible ways, you know, to 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 keep them, you know, going and everything. And he for she formed she helped form his worldview. Mm -hmm. And um, um, this is this is the chapter of what we learned, how he came to be. Yep. And that and that, you know, hatred of his mother is something he projects onto women. He never likes women's undergarments. Uh, <laughs> you know, he feels he feels judgmental about, uh, you know, he's judgmental towards Lori. He's judgmental towards in his attitudes towards Sally. He right. reveres the comedian, which we know is not something that a good moral actor should do. Right. So he's, you know, he's, he's, it's complicated because, like, some in some cases, like his mm -hmm. intentions are good. In some cases, they're actually not. No, not at all. You know, so we're, it's... we're we're not supposed to interpret this character, um, or like I guess the way uh, Alan Moore says it, we're not supposed to interpret him as a um a great hero, a great Batman, a great Superman, you know, if you right. will, or whatever. You know, he's a morally complex person. You know. Uh, I mean, it's up to you whether you want to see him as one, you know, a uh, badass or this or, you know, um, and we'll actually touch on this in the Watchmen movie. And there's some things I want to, you know, talk about as far as that, how, what a lot of things that they got wronged in my eyes. But <laughs> the way everything is just laid out in this particular chapter here, Scott, amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of those, you know, any any time we get to a part where there's not a lot of dialogue and we say, oh, it's it's rendered really well on the page. Those those moments tend to be they tend to be, have been converted by Zach pretty well. Mm. Uh, anytime he has to have any sort of emotion and or uh, you know uh, dialogue, not right. as good. Right, right, not as good. So you know, it's an inferior work to this, but it's not bad. We'll, yep. we'll get to it. <laughs> we'll the get the, to fi it. the final page, the blood just keeps coming down, and then the clock continues to tick. There's uh, there's some blood on the clock, and it's all running down. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, we'll continue, you know, um, yes. uh, we'll continue. So, so, so uh, just keep, you know, send us a feedback at watching Watchmen and Nerd Cyclopedia. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, Specifically, at we want to know feedback wise. We want to know, do you have any questions about anything yes. you've seen? Yes. Did you yes. like anything we had to say? Did you yes. think we missed something really badly that you need us yeah, to yeah, kind of take? Please, please, because we want to be we're, we're not experts. We yeah. like to think we are. I mean, we, I we, like we, to we, think I'm an expert at everything <laughs> I do. <laughs> but we love we were so passionate about this, this, um, this graphic novel um, that we would love to hear your feedback on anything regarding if, what we've talked about. If you need a prompt, you know, we, we want to hear from everybody. So yes. please, please do write us. But if you need a prompt, mm -hmm. you know, a good prompt for this one would be, you know, is Rorschach good or evil? That's my question. That's our study question for the week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm going to put my tweed jacket with the leather patches on the elbow. Is, is he a good person or is he a bad person? What yeah, is your, is, 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 the, is the bad could be put in quotations? Is that an interpretation of itself? Mm -hmm. Is good an interpretation of itself? But, you know, these are... Remember, there's no such thing as up. Up is... Remember, <laughs> Dr. Manhattan will say, up is an arbitrary arbitrary <laughs> designation. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? So yeah, um, um, follow us on Twitter, social media, Nerd Cyclopedia, and also at Watchmen Podcast. One, no T at the no end. T. Um, please join our Facebook group and, you know, join us in the discussion and everything. Um, as Sam and Scott are watching um, Watchmen. Um, and Scott come see us in April. Exactly. Come at see Steel us at Steel City, City Con in Con. Pittsburgh, and it's in Moroville, PA. Yep, we're gonna be there. It's gonna be great. From the 12th through the 14th of April, guys. You know, yep. we would love to see you in person, and you know, shake hands, and you know, we'll even kiss your babies. You know, or if you, I ain't kissing I I'm not kissing. Not kissing any. Babies. Any, okay, all right. no, I'm not. I'm not running. For we're not gonna go that far. No, we're not. Look, we'll wave at your babies. We'll wave at them. Oh man, but yeah, enjoyed this episode, guys. So, um, you know, just um, like I said, leave us that feedback, and we'll see you when we see ya. Yep. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you soon.